Hi everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome to week two of our online lives. Um, greetings from Sydney, Australia again, uh, where I thought I'd wear my very funky batik Indonesian shirt, uh, bought from the same place as uh, where all the cool Indonesian kids buy their tops from. And I have accompanying me and keeping me uh, uh, company this week is, of course, uh, Magic Johnson. Um, Kyle, I thought you'd appreciate it. I couldn't find a Larry Bird one. I wish I did. It would have been awesome. Anyway, moving right along. I've just recorded the lecture and put it up. Um, I apologize for being late. I just got logged out of the system and it just I just spent 29 minutes online with IT getting them to fix it. So this week we're doing um, populism and it's a really good contrast to look at populism following our week on cosmopolitanism. Um, and you can see the contrast, one about trying to expand the, 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 the interaction of nation states, one of them trying to withdraw from, from, from that populism, often driven by a sense of nationalism. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really, uh, I hope you enjoy this week. I concentrate on the one um, reading, which is by Obermay, but there are two others, specifically looking at Donald Trump. Uh, one is about, one is an analysis of different literature about the rise of Donald Trump. And the second one is about, um, about Trump within the context of, uh, of the broader uh, sort of uh, populist movement in the United States. Now what's important, there's three key points I wanna make here that I really wanna emphasize. One is that populism is contextualized, yeah? It, it, it it's, doesn't matter if you believe that populism is driven by the leader, by a crisis or whatever it is, but it's not the same. We can never look at it as being the same in different parts. So the populist movement in the UK, for example, looks different to the populist movement in the US. Um, so one example that I use is talking about the National Health Service in the in the in the UK helped drive the threat to the National Health Service or the undermining of the National Health Service is uh, is is one of the most fundamental identities of Britain. And when it was undermined, it created a, a, a kind of a resentment. So um, so yeah, so that's a that's a universal health care. Whereas you look at the almost the exact opposite um, happens in the U US um, if people try and drive the sort of the Affordable Health Care Act what you get is this sense of populist movements reacting against the government entering their lives. So it's contextual. The second one is the idea that it's a very thin ideology, meaning that it doesn't quite have the, 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 the sort of the historical rigor um, that you know, other ideologies, political ideologies have, such as you know, um, liberalism or social democracy, um, socialism, communism, and so on. So what happens is you get this, this kind of idea of some, pop, some broad populist ideas, and there are some themes that cut across, um, and they're layered on top of the, the relevant um, ideology, and that's a, a, second, a, sec, a second one. I suppose the third, uh, the third um, thing about uh, populism that I wanna say is that it's not dominated by the left or the right. Although uh, most recently with the rise of Donald Trump and Brexit, it, we've been talking about right-wing populist movements, we should also um, acknowledge the fact that you know it's not ideologically driven by left or right. That goes back to the idea that it's a thin layer, right? Um, a, a thin political layer. Um, so you know you can look at Occupy Wall Street, you can look at Bernie Sanders, you can look at the left-wing movements throughout Latin America, Hugo Chavez and others. So it's not just driven by right-wing or left-wing populism. It is, it is. It crosses those political ideologies. So what's happening? Um, so what's happening now is uh, the lectures up. We will meet face to face. Uh, we'll try and organise some breakout groups, and then also don't forget that you have to. Uh, you should be submitting your um, literature review. It's only the literature review. It's a draft literature review, um, about a thousand words. I would recommend, um, and I will. Um, I will. Uh, I think that's it. I will get back to you all uh, tomorrow. I'll see you face to face. I hope you're doing well and dealing with these crazy times. Bye now.